Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if it's your first time here, my name is Cole. I am a real estate photographer with a uh, severe, you could call it, hobby in drones. Severe is probably not the right word, but we'll go with it. Um, I just wanted to bring you guys through another one of my real estate shoots. If uh, this is your first time here, feel free to click on my channel and I have another video where I go through another house. This one, uh, obviously every piece of real estate, every house is gonna be a little bit different. The angles are gonna be a little bit different. Um, and this one's a little bigger than the last one I did too. So there'll definitely be some new things to look at. I know there's a road right on the other side of me. So when we get up in the air, we'll see how big that road is because if it is a main road, you wanna kind of keep it out of the pictures for the most part. Uh, it really depends on the real estate agent, but when you're buying a house and you see that the, this beautiful house that you're looking at is right on a busy road, that's a little bit of a deterrent. So. I'm not misleading people, um, but we don't want all the photos to show the road if we can get some that kind of leave it out. So we're going to get booted up here and my favorite part of the car, we're going to launch from the roof again. Now I had a comment on one of my previous videos that I didn't do enough disclosures regarding flying for profit, flying for real estate. I am part 107 certified. Uh, in order to fly your drone for any commercial reason, you do need a license, you need to register your drone, all that. So don't think that you can just start flying your drone for real estate uh, and start making money like uh, tomorrow, unless you have some of those certifications. So big disclaimer there, but uh, the process is not that hard to get your 107. And uh, real estate photography is a fantastic way to get into commercial drone services. Because like I'll show you, it's it's fairly straightforward. Obviously, with a couple of things different here or there. All right, so i got to switch over to my SD card. Because yesterday I forgot it. Good thing a lot of the DJI drones have some internal storage built in. Which is kind of new to me, because correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the original Mavic had any internal storage. Uh, if it did, it was very little. Could be wrong. What I'm thinking about, there was a time I went to Switzerland and I forgot my SD card. Or it wasn't even that. I think I uh, I had an SD card. Oh man. One of the neighbors is out. The neighbors always get really nervous when uh, when I fly my drone around. So, oh, she actually might just be a cleaning lady. I think she'll leave me alone. Yeah. All right, now she's just cleaning. We're fine. Um, but yeah, I was in Switzerland and my SD card was full and I was in the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen. And I know you guys are probably saying, Cole, why didn't you just delete what was on there? I don't know. I, I think it must have been like equally spectacular footage. Because the story doesn't make sense to me either. I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, why didn't I to just clear the card and have all that space? But there must have... I must have either forgotten the card entirely. It's been like seven years since I went, but I must have either forgotten the card entirely or it was full of something that I really, really didn't want to get rid of. So I have like five aerial photos from my trip to Switzerland and uh, I'll be forever a little bit salty about it. I'm gonna have to go back just to fix that. But anyway, let's get into it. So we're gonna make sure, we're actually gonna format the card. I'm gonna format the internal storage too because when I get home and I start downloading all the photos, I've got like several weeks of photos and then it starts creating more folders uh, with uh, the photos that I take here and it just gets complicated. So we're gonna get a nice clean formatted card. Double check, there's nothing in the photos, good, all right. So um, for the record, we're not in any controlled airspace right now. This area of Florida that I'm in, we're pretty far from an airport. We're like 15 miles from an airport, so we're good out here. Uh, there are some shoots that I do have to get Lance approval. That's a really easy process. You just download the uh, the Aloft app. I think that's what it's still called. They've done some kind of changing on in terms of what they call it. But all right, let's get up in the air. Shut up, Cole. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure my auto exposure bracketing is on. So we do five shots to create a, create a nice HDR photo. But let's get the drone up in the air and I'll show you guys the property that I'm looking at. All right. And of course, as soon as I take off, we got a little bit of a gust, but nothing too crazy. 
All right, so as you guys can see, this is a nice big house. Really lends itself to that straight on shot. So I'm gonna go up a little higher. I like to start the first shot pretty even with the roof line. You don't want to show too much sky. You really wanna focus on the property itself. You wanna make sure you have the entire roof line um, in the shot. You don't wanna to go too close where you're cutting off the corners. You always wanna make sure either the whole property's in the shot, and I'll show you that on the higher shots, or the entire roof line. So the first one looks good. Take that. Now, first one's gonna start at about the roof level. Then I usually go up between 40 and 50 feet. If it's a bigger property, I'll probably go up in 50 foot intervals. So I'll have about four photos at the top of the house. Then I'll go around and take one from each angle on the corners, one completely top down shot. And then I'll do the same thing in the back of the house where I started about between 150 and 200 feet. And then I'll kind of drop down in 50 foot increments until again, I'm just above roof level in the backyard. Um, Sometimes I'll include the whole backyard in that last shot. Sometimes I'll really focus on the house. It depends on how long the lot is. If it's a really long lot, I, there's no need for me to include the whole property in every single shot on that tier uh, because the at least the top two, if not the top three shots from the back are all gonna show it. So, uh, like I said, we're gonna go up about 50 feet here. I'm gonna do a little visual check, just make sure there's no palm trees around me. Oh my God, I just looked right into the sun. All right, again, we're gonna adjust, make sure there's just a little sliver of the sky, showing pretty much the whole property here. Go up again, gonna get up to about 80 feet here. So you see that road I was talking about? I don't really see a problem with that road. That's really just kind of within this little community. It's not gonna be a heavily trafficked road. Get another one here, making sure that property line's in there. Gonna go up a little more on this one. The lot's not too big, the house is pretty big but the lot itself doesn't require me to go too high. All right, so I'm gonna flip it into sport mode. That way we can get around these corners a little faster. So I wanna hit this from like a 45 degree angle now, and that's a really nice view of the lake. There's not really a way for me to get this road out of the picture here, so we're really gonna kinda of get that from the one in the back, hopefully. Those manned aircraft notifications always make me a little bit nervous, as well as flying over water. Wow, you actually saw that shadow cross right over the house. All right, so unfortunately that road is actually gonna show up in every picture. So forget what I said in the beginning. We're so close to this little road, but again, it doesn't matter because it's not a huge road. It's not like we're on a highway. Let me back up a little bit, make sure I'm getting the corner of the lot. All right, back up. Now, this is a discretionary call. I like to show the shoreline in the back. Obviously, from the shots that you just took, the shots from the front of the house, you can see exactly where the body of water starts. I always like to just think about the context that I'm giving in every photo. So for this one, I like to show exactly how deep that backyard is from this high up shot in the back. Now, same thing, we'll get this corner of the house from 45 degree angle. Getting, feeling a little bit of pushback. Oh yeah, we're topping out at 25 miles an hour, so we're definitely fighting the wind in this direction. All right, we'll get it from this corner. This is the last shot from this height. Next one I typically do, because it's around the same altitude, is that straight down shot. Um, if you guys notice, that camera just flipped down really fast. If you can see it, I'm sure you guys are familiar with DJI remotes for the most part, but that uh, that function button right there, I have that programmed where if I click it once, um, it just flips the camera to the closest or the either the, the furthest 90 degree angle it is. So it's either going to be straight out, so I'll click it again, and it'll go to zero degrees, or straight down to 90. So you don't have to deal with the camera just taking forever. You can adjust the speed, but I like how slow it moves when I'm doing videos. So for photography, uh, it's nice to just have the camera be able to flip down quickly like that. All right, so we're gonna lower. Now, ideally, I like to shoot with the bottom, of the, the front of the house at the bottom of the picture, but properties like this where by doing that, you're getting a little bit too much of the property next to it. I'll just rotate like this and definitely not a big deal but you wanna make sure, obviously for this one, this one's huge to just understand like the exact shape of the property and 
where the property line is. So you don't want to cut off anything here. I'll go even a little bit higher. So worst case scenario, I can crop it. So we got that one. I'm gonna flip the camera back up, move it down a little bit. Now we did those shots before uh, at the top around the 170 mark, 170 feet. So we're gonna go down to like 120 here. This will be technically our second shot of the straight on the back of the house. So we're gonna grab that. Going to drop down to about 60 or 55. Again, keeping the shoreline in and then making sure that you keep in mind like the amount of sky you're showing. Cause like I'll show you guys, I used to take it like this, which looks nice from um, just like a photogenic perspective. Cause you can see it meets the rule of thirds requirement. Uh, if, if you guys can see, I have the grid lines for the rule of thirds on my screen. The way I was taught to do it and the way our pictures are, are kind of a little bit uniform through my company the sky replacement can sometimes come in a little wonky so by giving yourself less sky to have to edit you end up making your, your lives a little easier so that's the reason for it but if you guys prefer to fit the rule of thirds in there and have more sky and you want to spend more time on each photo replacing the sky making sure it scales properly more power to you because I, I agree it looks nice um, not much going on with the sky today. It's just a flat blue sky. But if you can get those nice like cumulonimbus clouds where it's like they're nice and puffy, those are my favorite. I love looking for those in terms of sky replacement. And now anytime we have a pool, see this is the one where I have no problem cutting off the shoreline a little bit because we have everything else. Uh, every, every other photo shows where the shoreline is. This was tough though, because those trees back here are really overgrown. So I'm going to take this one because this would tip, typically be my picture. I'm gonna uh, switch it back to normal mode so that I can turn my proximity sensors back on. And I hate flying sideways because you are really flying blind. Now, if you guys can tell, there is like no good way to get this because these trees are right on top. I honestly, personally hate the look of any shot where you can't see the skyline, at least for taking photos of houses. I've seen people do it. Sometimes it comes out looking nice. It's just a personal thing. I don't like it. So although like this would be able to show you the whole backyard, it's just, I don't like it. I don't like the photo. I won't take it. I'd rather not have a photo um, that shows the whole backyard rather than include something like that. Cause I'm about to go into the house and take photos of the whole interior anyway. The And the sprinklers are on out there. So I'll probably have to do the outside of the house last. That's a side note though. But yeah, there's really unfortunately no real other way that I can get this backyard because that shot from the back didn't really do it justice and I'm not getting much more here let me see just one last ditch effort let me come over here drop down a little bit let's make sure nothing's below me all right yeah, it's not good. I don't like it. This is really not a good picture. I'll take it. Back up a little bit. I'm going to take it just to have it. But I am almost definitely going to end up deleting this later. But it doesn't hurt to take the photo. So yeah, that's it. I got all my shots. Got the top down one. The top down one is the one I've forgotten a couple times. Um, that's a beautiful house right here. I wish I was taking pictures of this one. But that is pretty much it. I'm trying to think I have any final comments. Let me land this thing and then I'll be right back. I forgot to come back. So uh, now it's nighttime, I've changed. But uh, I do want to recap the flight, go over some last minute things that I think would be really helpful for you guys to know. Uh, and just mostly reminders. I've kind of said it throughout the course of the video, but I want to give a nice little summation of the more important points. So just to clarify something, when I fly from my car, it doesn't look like I'm always looking at the drone, which I'm not. But the, the rule as I interpret it, and I think as it's meant to be interpreted, is the visual line of sight is you have to be able to see the drone. You obviously can't be looking at the drone the whole time because that defeats the, the purpose of having a controller and having a screen in front of you. 
Um, so pretty much at any point, I should be able to look out my window and find the drone, um, except for a few instances where I'll be behind a tree or maybe those last couple shots behind the house. The, the time between when I can't see the drone is very short. Um, next, definitely check your airspace clearances before attempting to do any of this in your area. Some of you guys might live closer to an airport than you think. And then obviously have your part 107. Uh, don't try to run a business or do any sort of professional services with a drone without your part 107. You could get in a lot of trouble, including I think it's like an $11,000 fine. So don't mess around with that. Next, you want to double check that your SD card actually recorded all the photos that you took. I've had it happen to me where that first shot at the beginning of the house that I love, I get home, I upload my photos and it's not there. And I know I didn't miss that shot. It's, it's the most obvious one. It's the first one I take every time. There's no way I wouldn't have hit the shutter button. So sometimes stuff happens. So just double check, go through the photos before you actually leave the site. That's pretty much it though. So if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. It does mean a lot to me that you guys actually get something out of these videos. And when you leave comments asking me questions or tell me that you learned something, that means a lot. I love that. So uh, do me a huge favor, consider subscribing. I will be making more videos like this. Right now I'm on kind of like a once a month kind of schedule with these videos. I'll try to put out shorts more often. Um, I do wanna up my quantity of videos being put out though. I wanna get to at minimum once every two weeks. So subscribe, doesn't hurt you, it helps me. All right, if you guys have any questions, definitely hit me up in the comments. Thanks for watching.